Welcome everyone to our ninth episode of Thriving in the New Normal. I am excited. Uh, we've got a great topic this week. We're gonna be talking about demand service and uh, we are coming into that demand season. So I know that everybody has had their phones start to ring and we're starting to see signs of life out there. Also, uh, many parts of the country are starting to see some signs of life in the economy as well as things start to open back up. So there is an anticipation and an excitement that has been around. So I know that everybody has a lot of great things that uh, are happening in their communities and in their area. I also know there's a lot of concern out there too with uh, just what are things gonna look like this summer. Uh, we hope to be able to help you better prepare for those unforeseen things and for some of the things that you are planning for. And uh, so I'm excited to bring our panel back to start talking about these different things and these different topics. As I said, this week, we're gonna be focusing on the topic of demand service as we continue to cycle around through the HVAC business cycle and the different way that you interact with your customers. If everybody could go ahead and get their cell phones out, wanna make sure that you have this number saved in your cell phone. Uh, we're gonna be asking you at different times if there's a topic or a subject that you'd like to do a deeper dive in, please go ahead and text uh, one of these uh, different uh, uh, words to the number that you have below and uh, you can set up an appointment with our coaches where they will be more than happy to do a no cost uh, uh, session with you to go deeper into the topic that they're covering for this week. So make sure you have this phone number 713-856-1853 to be able to text throughout the, the series. Uh, if you have missed any of our series, we've got a lot of great uh, uh, topics that have been recorded. All of these are on either the Goodman Business Toolbox or the Amana Brand Best Business Academy. Please go to those websites and there you will see under dealer resources and tools, uh, the Thriving in the New Normal series. We also have many other pre-recorded uh, series that are there that you can access and you can look at when you have questions for different things uh, pertaining to your business and different strategies that you'd like to employ. And uh, so you can access all the information there. We're gonna be looking at the HVAC engines through the eyes of service this week. And so when you look at demand service, this is when customers have a problem, the system breaks down, it's not working the way that it's supposed to, and they call and ask if you can get somebody out there to fix it. How does demand service tie into the maintenance agreements? What does demand service do for driving replacement sales or driving indoor air quality and driving those uh, tune-ups? And so each of our panelists will be talking about how demand service can impact each of these parts of the HVAC business engine. I know we're gonna be looking at several different key performance indicators to be able to help you with this. If you have questions during the chat, please go ahead and enter those questions into the system. Uh, I do know last week there were con some concerns that everybody had in regards to uh, uh, some challenges that maybe that they are, are experiencing locally. What I would ask is if you have uh, local challenges that you have in regards to uh, uh, availability or other issues that may be popping up, please get in touch with your territory sales manager or your distributor, and they'd be more than happy to help you and support you in those challenges. The purposes of all these sessions is to help your business be prepared to be able to thrive in the uh, various different situations that we're in. So thank you again so much, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna kick it off with Matt Plugoff. He's gonna be talking about uh, evolving your brand strategy. Matt? I, I always forget to unmute my microphone. Hey everybody, good morning. Um, as always, to reiterate Ben's comment, uh, another real pleasure and a privilege to be able to share some ideas with you regarding this topic. So thank you very, very much for your time and attention. And as always, to my esteemed colleagues and panelists, great to be connected. So I wanna talk a little bit about a conversation that I had this morning. And I was working with a, a, a client uh, and we were talking about just this very thing, right? Demand service, how do you treat demand service? Uh, do you treat it as a service call? Do you treat it as a replacement opportunity? If it evolves into a replacement opportunity, how do you handle that conversation? And you know, it was kind of a compare and contrast situation because on one hand, he had a technician, he has a technician who's just extremely personable, 
leads with his heart, is an effective communicator, makes clients feel safe. And, you know, that's what we would all expect from, from a great relationship from a, a service technician in a demand service environment. To be treated with respect and integrity, to have clear communication, um, and, and, and if and when the situation turned into a replacement opportunity, to handle it um, with retail customer-centric language and materials. So that was situation one. Situation two uh, was a technician who was not having great results, is not having great results. And in this case, even when he would attempt to convert a demand service opportunity into a replacement, um, struggled tremendously on a few different points. And, you know, it's funny because that A starts with attitude, right? You had two people doing essentially the same job. One, believing that his, his role is to not only service the customers as needed, but to give them low-pressure options. Two, option two is the service technician that almost takes the contrarian point of view, right? And, and when the opportunities are there, rather than try and capitalize on them uh, politely, just, you know, disregards them. And ultimately, the only person that suffers from that is, is, is the customer. And so I'd like you to ask yourself two questions, right? As a salesperson or as a business owner, what five words do I want to be known for? What five words do I want my company to be known for? And, you know, you'll probably come up with things like honesty and integrity and loyalty, family, things like that. The purpose of the exercise is clear, right? If you consistently keep your promise, if you consistently not only, A, know who you are, but if you keep your promise to your customers on a regular basis, and that is, a, that, that, that is the product of coaching, right? I mean, there are two reasons why people that work for you don't just skyrocket. One is they don't know how to do it, or two, they just don't want to do it. And they're both solvable. But I don't want to lose sight of the long game here, right? As Jennifer knows, as we all know, if you look at the scale of loyalty among your clients, you spend a lot of money to build a base that you would consider to be a casual audience, right? You fund your website, your social media feeds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Building a customer base for demand service takes time and it takes money. And they transition eventually if they stay with you for a maintenance agreement to what we could describe as an engaged audience. You see them a couple times a year, so you do engage them. But the opportunities for leveraging demand service on the big picture scale occur when an engaged audience actually becomes part of a connected community. When they see your brand, when they recognize that it is consistently delivered and at the pinnacle of this kind of hierarchy here is exactly who we're all trying to create and acquire through our demand service efforts, which means we cannot keep them uh, or, or view them transactionally. It takes a lot of money to acquire customers, but if you connect and if you deliver and if you keep your promise, over time you develop a small nucleus of super fans. And they don't take very much money or effort to keep because they come back to you voluntarily. And that's who we'd all like to build our business around, all of our sales efforts around. And so when I think about demand service, I think about two things, right? On the short term, are my technicians using this experiential marketing opportunity to keep the promise? What five words do I want my company to be known for? And am I working with my technicians so that they understand that their first and foremost role in the company as an experiential marketer is to keep the promise? The technical piece, of course, is a foregone conclusion. But second, the long term, if you're going to play the long game in terms of customer loyalty, it's to understand that if you're paying money to gain customers, and if you're treating that transactionally, if you're treating these demand service calls transactionally, you're missing the, 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 the hidden growth opportunity within any business, which is a loyal cadre of super fan customers that tell people about you, that connect with you socially, that cross sell and continue to buy from you when you have new and improved offerings or specials or promotions. The goal of demand service, of course, is to service the equipment. The real goal, in my opinion, is to over time, build a radically loyal base of super fan customers that don't take a whole lot of effort, energy, or resources to maintain.
So when I think about demand service, I think about the long game. Yes, we're going to go do it. We're going to treat the customer with the utmost respect. The long game is if I treat that customer transactionally, I'm not building my base of highly hyper loyal fans. And that's what we all want, so we'd all like. So that's my perspective on demand service. There's a short-term goal and there's a long-term goal. Short-term, conduct, integrity, respect. Before we pass the hat, um, I want to just pose a question, right? The season's here. I was talking with somebody in Florida. They're out running calls, right? They're doing service calls. They're doing sales calls. The question is, how would it feel to have the best selling season that you've had in years? Right? Going into summer, how would you feel if you're making more money than you did last year and if you're having better relationships with your customers? I say that for a simple reason. The next sales lab, I'm not going to bully pulpit, is in two weeks. What we are talking about specifically is overcoming price and stall objections. What do you do when someone says, it's a lot more than I thought, and what do you do when someone says, um, you're the first of three, or I'm going to sit on this? Included, of course, get on board the sales lab and you've got unlimited access. We've had five hours of recorded coaching, 50 pages of coaching materials, 60 bucks a month. Stop anytime, but nobody has. So the link is at Aaron Fletching. I appreciate you all so very much. Treat service as a long-term piece of building a loyal customer base. That's the end game. Okay. I thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. You are fantastic, my friend. Thank you so much. Let's rock and roll. So if you're interested in building your demand service opportunities, let's walk through the process. First and foremost, someone's got a big issue. They're hot something's wrong and somebody's going to go fix it. At least they're going to try and figure out how to. We have to remember as Matthew was just pointing out that every person on the end, other end of an issue, it's a human being that's got an issue. They have a problem and they follow a series of steps to try and figure out how to resolve it. So she is going to head over to Google and see what she can find. For everyone on here, you guys go check and see do you come up if she's looking if she's looking for a demand service such as AC repair in my city emergency AC repair in my city are you an option on page one of Google when she's searching I know this is a little redundant but we're gonna get through this because we have to make sure that you guys are an option in this drawer you see every time somebody goes to Google and does a search if you remember this movie a giant file drawer opens up and inside that single drawer for that single search term in that single location there is a specific number of pages in this drawer and inside this drawer you either exist or you don't if someone if she's looking for AC repair in Elizabeth Colorado as they go through this search, you either show up on page one of Google or you don't. You either are in the top three or you're not. I'm gonna pause here for just a minute. Out of this search, when this drawer opens up, notice the top right corner very quick, there's 80 million pages in this specific drawer. In order for this company to make any money, They've got to get into the top 10 of 80 million. So getting to a position number eight or nine of 80 million, and in this case, our client's sitting in eight and nine of 80 million, that's progress. Everyone doesn't exist in every drawer right out of the gate, right? You have to create a page specific to that search term, a service you want to sell in a city you want to sell it, because she's looking for answers. And then we have to make the page popular enough called digital marketing or search engine optimization or search engine marketing. We have to make those pages popular enough that they are deemed as one of the top 10 options Google's gonna display to her when she's looking. For example, if someone's looking for AC repair in Cambridge, Minnesota, 
there are 63 million pages in this drawer and this client is sitting in position number two. They're gonna occupy around 50% of the total searches for sitting in a page one position two versus sitting in a position A to nine. The higher you climb and the more links you own on page one, the more opportunities you have to get additional business. And my iRobot just started. I'm just telling you a little background noise. If you hear her vacuuming the floor, that's what that is. <laughs> so next, furnace repair in Barron, Wisconsin. In this specific instance, this company owns page one, a listing inside of the Google Maps, and they also own position one and two. Therefore, their odds of getting the business are increased than owning one position on page one of Google. And for emergency AC repair in Maple Plain, Minnesota, they own position one, and two, and because they have a physical office with a verified Google business listing, they also own the far right side. So now you're talking about owning 70 plus percent of the potential views and click-throughs conversions for that particular search. You see, every time someone searched for something different, a different file drawer opens up with a different level of competition. Competition is the number of pages in the drawer. The greater the population, the greater the competition, the more you have to do to get there, the more content you have to have, the more marketing dollars you have to go towards building link and links and increasing your popularity. Everything you do to make sure that you own and occupy more positions on page one of Google is going to increase your overall odds and opportunity of bringing on a new customer that you can wow and turn into a super fan. In order to increase in conversions, we have to take it a step further. Not only do you need to be on page one of Google, in the maps, potentially with an ad, and in the organic listings, but we need to accompany that with positive reviews right in the search engine results page. That is gonna give you a greater advantage than anyone else on the page. Out of 223,000 pages, they're listed with 522 reviews in the Google Maps, and then we have 154 reviews in the organic results. Each one of these things is going to allow you to dominate a particular marketplace. As a, a digital marketing agency, our goal is to try and get each service that a consumer needs to be owned and occupied by our clients. In this particular situation, out of the 10 options on page one, our customers own and occupy four of the options. So four of our clients are the options out of the 10 available on that page. So now's the time to do an inventory and figure out, does your website contain pages that are relevant towards the services you wanna to sell, towards demand service? Do you have a page for emergency air conditioning repair, AC repair? Do you have each of the cities represented that you wanna be an option to? If the answer is no, let's fix it. Let's stop gambling money on things that are temporary, throwing money at things that don't last, and let's make sure we increase your visibility so that all consumers searching, whether it's on a PC, on a tablet, on a phone, or on a device, or they're talking to an Alexa or a Google, let's make sure that you guys become an option. If you need help trying to figure out how to prioritize all the things that are necessary in order to be able to do this, you guys reach out, contact, uh, contact us, text web to the main line, and let's set up a time to get together and make things happen with that. The amazing Stephen Dale. Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Um, ben, if you can hop up on our slides, that would be awesome. And then we, of course, have the, uh, the lovely Erica Leonor uh, as well. So uh, look, look. Hi, everyone. I just got to say this because we are such big fans of the CI web. And uh, Jennifer can get you on page one. Their team is awesome. 
Um, they will get you ready. They will get the phones to ring. Um, so as we go into this demand service, um, there is no time to delay. So uh, Erica and I want to demonstrate and share with you uh, this morning, what uh, we think the top five things you should never say to your customers. Um, and then we'll uh, share with you about that. So Erica. Yeah, so with going into demand service, and you have customers calling you and saying, hey, how much is this? Or do you guys have an appointment today? A lot of times you get your call handling team says things like, oh, well, we don't give pricing over the phone. Or, oh, you know, we're booked out this week. We don't have anything available to next week. Or unfortunately, we, we don't have any appointments today. Or, you know, I'm just a CSR. I'm not a technician. I don't know the pricing. And it makes us think, like, why do we always have to be so honest with our customers? Now, let me explain this. Honesty is great, but you want to be truthfully, positively, honestly, honest. You want to be truthful and positive, honest, instead of negative, honest. Meaning, yes, those things might be true. It might be true you don't get pricing over the phone. It might be true that you don't have any appointments today. For sure, that might be true. That's you being honest. But the reality is you have some other things that you could be truthful and honest about. And it all depends on what is the truth that you want to tell your customer. So let's go here to our next slide. And we're going to share with you one of the first things that people all say to customers. So the first one is we don't have pricing in the office. Customers call. What do they do, Stephen? Oh, you know, they call in and it's interesting. The first thing they ask is, you know, for a price and a CSR automatically thinks to themselves, well, that's a price shopper. Look, that's not a price shopper. They called you for a reason, meaning no one is sitting on the couch right now going, hey, what do you think it costs for a condenser fan motor? I don't know, man. That's a great question. Let's call around, right? That's Ooh. not happening. They called you for a reason because they have pain, because they have something going on. Um, and so the thing about being honest is instead of telling them what we can't do, we're going to tell them what we can do for them. Because ultimately, you have to be 911, right? They call. Help is on the way. There is no 912. So why don't we just uh, show what this looks like, uh, Erica? I'll call in. I'll be a customer. If you don't mind being one of the absolutely amazing director of first impression folks. Uh, and then the other one that we hear a lot, especially going into demand services, unfortunately we're booked. Um, and we'll show that one as well. So ring, ring. Thank you for choosing. Erica's totally awesome heating and air. My name is Erica. How can I make your day amazing? Uh, yeah, what do you guys charge to come out? Sure, I can totally help you out with that today. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Um, well, this is Steven. Hey, Steven, my name's Erica, and I'm going to be taking care of you today. Uh, what's going on? What's happening over there? Uh, you know, just the AC doesn't seem to be blowing well. It's kind of frustrating. Oh, dang it. That sounds super frustrating. So is it turning on at all? Is there air coming out of the vents, or is it blowing warm? Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's just blowing warm air. Yeah, a That's little frustrating. That's not fun at all. I bet you and your family are super uncomfortable. We got quarantine going on, so everybody's at home. Oh, wow, Stephen, I'm so glad you called today. I'll absolutely take good care of you. When were you hoping to get someone out there? Wow. Um, well, as soon as possible. Today would be great. Okay, I'm going to pause now. right here. Mostly, you're going to go into this knowing you're booked out for two weeks because it's summertime. And go ahead and push the next slide, Ben, for the next one. This is how your customers feel when you say, we don't have pricing in the office or, unfortunately, we're booked. We don't want customers to feel like this because they don't care what you can't do. So if you notice, when Steven asked me for that price, this is the script that I said. I said, sure, we can definitely help you out with that. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? And I just deflected that price and I wanted to treat Steven like a human being, a connection instead of a transaction. Sometimes the CSRs will get blinders on and we're just a one track mind. So now we're going to go into some scripting. Just hit a couple buttons, Ben, for me, please. Um, we're going to show you some scripting of what to say when you're booked. What? And so instead of saying, unfortunately, I'm booked, Stephen, here's what I'm going to say. Hey, Stephen, when would you like somebody to get out there? Uh, so it's today, as soon as possible. Great. Let's go ahead and get your contact information. We'll take a look at our schedule together. What's your address? Blah, blah, blah. What's your phone number? Blah, blah, blah. What's your email? Blah, blah, blah. 
Excellent. Thank you so much for all that information, Stephen. All right. So I'm looking at your address, looking at our schedule here. I know you want someone as soon as possible. So let's do this. What I'm going to do first is put you on our urgency list. Our urgency list can get you faster service. If we happen to be running ahead of schedule or perhaps somebody calls in to reschedule, I'm totally going to give you a call and move up your appointment. Now, in order to get you on our urgency list for today, I do need to get you in our schedule. And I have an availability on Friday between 8 and 10. Can I book that appointment to get you on today's urgency list to provide you with faster service? Um, yeah, we, I, I can do that. You know what? Maybe I'll just call around and try to find somebody. Okay. Now I'm going to pause right here. This <laughs> is the first tool that we want to offer customers is I didn't anywhere in here say, no, unfortunately we're booked. All I'm telling him is what I can do for him. And if you are interested in the next three tools that we have when customers give pushback, like what Steven just did, we have three more tools to add on um, on top of the urgency list. So really quickly, we're going to give you the next three things to never say to your customers. The next one, oh, when you'd use these scripts in, first off, this is how your customers feel. They are well, so happy because now they like you. Well, well, think of it like this, Erica. I mean, I, I'm calling because something is going on and, and so many times the phones are ringing in demand service. We just say things like, look, let me get you on a standby list. Let me put you on a wait list, a cancellation list. Those are all things that make me want to hang up and start looking for someone else that's going to say yes. So it's just a better way to have a plan in place of an urgency list. Um, and we can teach ways, you know, to go with a backup plan and some other things so that we can go ahead and get them in the schedule and booked. Because what will happen is if they do hang up the phone and they call around, they're going to realize everyone else is booked. So if I can proactively go ahead and get them in the schedule and use an urgency list or a backup plan, that's a much more proactive way to take care of that demand service. And you will be the happy dog. So three more things, Erica. Show me what you got. <laughs> Awesome. Next so our slide. next three things, I love that, Stephen. Thank you. The next three things are, um, that's not our policy. And we use this one all the time. Oh, that's not our policy. We can't do this for you or we won't do that. Customers don't care about your policies. Sometimes we say things like, well, I'm not a technician. I'm just a CSR. Well, if you're just a CSR, then all you are is an order taker. Heck no, techno, you are the queen bee or the king of that office. You control the schedules of those technicians. Let's own it. Hey, you know what? I control the schedule of the people you need to talk to. The last one is, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry we're booked or I'm sorry we don't get pricing over the phone. Nobody believes you when you say I'm sorry. So these are our top five things that we never want to say. And we want to make sure that you can get the top 20 things of our script of what to not say to your customers. And that's why if you text power to the main line, you will go to a landing page where you can access those files. You can learn more about the power certification program and the accountability coaching where we will train CSRs on these techniques and help them to well customers. And then we also have the next program that we're launching, which starts on Monday, everybody. We would love to get you on this program for Monday. It's called the Momentum Training. And it's the six top things that leaders and CSRs and technicians need to know going into the busy season. Um, you don't want to miss out. It is a $2,000 program for only $2.99 per company. So go ahead and text power to that number. Go register for the Momentum Program. We start on Monday. It's going to knock your socks off. Stephen, what else do you got for us? Uh, yeah, I, this one is absolutely, I'm so excited about this one because it is to really get the momentum. It's, it's over the next three weeks. It starts on Monday. It's going to be a Monday and a Wednesday for the next three weeks. And we're so grateful because this is actually being sponsored by Goodman. And so because Goodman is sponsoring this, normally we do charge $2,000 per company for this momentum training. But we have gotten to where it is now uh, because of the sponsorship with Goodman, they're only going to charge $2.99 per team. So your entire company will get this momentum training. It starts on Monday. It's going to be twice a week. It's for 45 minutes. It's a live interactive training to really get momentum for your call handling team, for your technicians, and for your leadership team. Uh, and so it really focuses on what is it going to look like the next three weeks to get this momentum uh, to take care of those customers in this demand service season. You, 
go if, if you're on this thing, text the word power. Text the word power to 713-856-1853. Thank you, Jennifer. She's so amazing. Uh, text power, and this will bring it up a link. You can click on it. It'll give you all the details, the juicy details, all the details about the momentum training. Uh, and the great thing about this, Erica, is it's not just being trained by yourself or me, but you've also got Brigham Dickinson, which you've seen him over the last few weeks as well. Um, and when there's a couple other trainers that we have as well that really bring some really unique insight uh, for your company. So this is really a once in a lifetime opportunity and we're grateful for Goodman. Again, text the word power uh, to the 713-856-1853 and that will give you all the information. So uh, I'm excited about this season. So our next uh, person up is a very good friend of mine, uh, John Ellis, who is an absolutely rock star when it comes to being a service professional himself. So I'll take it away, John. Excited to be here, Erica and Steven, man, the energy, I love it. So they just talked about the five things that you don't say. Well, I'm gonna talk about five critical service call questions that you need to work in. So um, we have lots of options. There's lots of different programs. There's flat rate menu pricing. There's different scripting, depending on whose uh, program you're using. Power Selling Pros has some great scripting as well that they offer. Um, so what I'm gonna give you is uh, some questions to ask. How you work it into your program is entirely up to you and your company. And you don't have to go verbatim as long as you get the, the point across. So we're going to touch on uh, uh, safety, health, comfort, and efficiency. And how we, uh, how we get that into the, into the questions. So number one would be safety. And uh, here's a little thing that I like to say is uh, at Dynamic Air, we believe that safety is no accident. If I find a safety concern beyond today's repair, would you like me to inform you? So remember, we're doing demand service. So your, your number one goal is to take care of the client's pain. So they called you for that reason, but there's opportunities there in that call. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through just a quick service call. I'm gonna show you how to incorporate this and it's gonna hold true for, for the rest of my presentation. So I, I, I show up at the customer's house, it's like, oh, hey, Mr. Smith, I'm John, what brings us out today? No cooling, do you mind showing me around? Just to clarify, did the office uh, tell you about our $79 uh, service call? Oh, that's great. So at Dynamic Air, we believe that safety is no accident. If I find a safety concern beyond today's repair, would you like me to inform you? More times than not, you're gonna get an answer of yes. That's fantastic. I'm going to take a look at the problem. I should be able to show you several options. And as long as you choose a service today, I can waive that $79. Is that okay? Great. I'm going to get started. So several things happened there. I took care of a little business. I, I started a dialogue with that client. I have now permission to talk about a safety concern. If I find one, and I haven't even touched the tool yet, and I've given them a $79 discount by waiving that, that fee. So um, now, now is uh, the time you get your tools, you do your diagnostics, you get permission to do the repair, whichever program you're using. And at that point in time, the system's running, you go back to the client and it could go something like this. Mr. Smith, you got a moment? Hey, the repair is working great, I got you up and running. The house is starting to cool down. Um, based on our conversation a little earlier, um, I had a look at uh, some of the other components in your system, and I'm a little concerned. I found uh, that your system is operating outside of the manufacturer's specifications for safety, but don't worry, we have some options. Would you like me to go over them? So that's, that's just a segue into presenting and getting permission and having that conversation. It's not high pressure, it's just a matter of a fact. And based on, based on the conversation, it'll, it'll give you uh, the next steps. Number two, let's talk about health. So I, uh, I consult all over the country with contractors and clients and 
I have a, a set of cards and I talk about safety, health, comfort, and efficiency. More times than not, I present the cards and say, Mr. Uh, homeowner, Mr. Smith, would you like, mind, uh, you know, what's important to you? They read the cards and you can lay them out. That way I at least, you know, know where, where your concerns are. Almost every time it falls, safety, health, comfort, and efficiency. Nowadays, it's health, safety, comfort, and efficiency. Always falls the same way. So the system's running. You've taken care of their pain. The air conditioning's running. So what has happened? You've already given them a discount for the, for the, for the service call. Confidence is way up. Sales resistance is down. Now is an opportunity to at least have the conversation without pressure. So we go something like this, Mr. Smith, which family member, member suffers from allergies, excessive sneezing, coughing, itchy eyes, headaches, chronic fatigue? So based on the answer that they give, we'll give you a direction to go. So it might go something like this. If, if you have the tools at your disposal to check a couple things, it may go like this, Mr. Smith, do you have a minute? Hey, based on our conversation, I was able to take a few measurements and I'm a little concerned. I did some, I did some particle readings and they're a little high. In fact, uh, based on uh, some national averages, um, your particle levels are high, but don't worry, we have some options. So would you like me to go over them? So there was no pressure. If you have those tools available, you can take some measurements. Uh, you can look at uh, carbon dioxide level. Uh, chronic fatigue would lead you towards carbon monoxide. And so you definitely would want to uh, take a look at those things. But if nothing else, Mr. Smith, you know, this is a great opportunity. You said little Johnny's got some uh, asthma. You know, I would like to set up an appointment with you with our healthy home advisor. He can come over and go in detail some of the issues that you're talking about, and we can get you going in, in the right direction. So how you word it is up to you, but having that conversation with no pressure and, and just uh, open dialogue just eases it. So number three, let's talk about comfort. So we are comfort providers. Now keep in mind, you already, you already took care of the client's pain. Confidence is up, sales resistance is down. And now, now is a good opportunity to have that conversation. Now I want you to, to notice that my questions are open-ended, which is a good way to phrase them so you're not just asking a yes or no question and they shut you down. If they wanna answer them, they will. And, and most people will as long as uh, you, know, you, you, you create a dialogue and a conversation. Mr. Smith, which rooms in the house are too hot, too cold, super dry, humid, or dusty? So based on the answer, it's going to give you a direction to go. And the conversation may go something like this. You mind if I have a look, Mr. Smith? Okay. Hey, you got a minute? Based on our conversation, I was able to look at a few things, and I'm a little concerned. I had a look at your air distribution system, and I'm seeing that there is definitely some issues that can get some... Uh, more conditioned air to, to where it needs to go. Um, would you like me, I have some options, would you like me to go over them? So no pressure, casual conversation got me to where I needed to go. So number four, let's talk about efficiency. So again, systems running, you're the, you went from zero to hero in no time at all, the house is cooling down and you could go something like this. Mr. Smith, during uh, extremely hot or cold times or peak seasons. Uh, do you have a uh, high energy bills? You know, what's the highest electric, electric or gas bill that you've paid? So it's a casual conversation. They may answer you, they may not, but depending on which direction you go, will tell you which answer you get will tell you the direction you, you, you will go. So it might go something like this. Mr. Smith, uh, based on the conversation you had, I was able to do a test. Uh, we do a system performance test. And I'm a little concerned. I'm seeing, based on the information that I gathered, your system's only delivering 50% of its capacity. So that means a couple things. One, you're not getting the you're not getting the capacity out of your system. Two, it's working really, really hard to do the job that it wants to do. And unfortunately, your compressor is running really hot. Heat equals energy, and the worst thing is it'll shorten the life of your equipment. But don't worry, we have some options. What would you like to do? 
So it wasn't high pressure. It was conversational. You're already the hero, and you you know you you just lend your way into it. Now remember, this is not verbatim, and you can go over this any way that your company sees fit. And so um, those are the four things that we uh, address now. At the beginning, I said there's five. So last but not least, number five, maintenance. Maintenance agreements are, um, are key to our service, our service company. So you've already done the repair. The customer's happy. The house is cooling down. At the end of, end of the call or during the, the invoicing process, depending on how your company does it, uh, it goes something like this. Mr. Smith, did my office explain to you that you could save money on today's service call if you were a service club member? Now, every company has a different way to offer maintenance agreements and service clubs and different ways they offer discounts and, and different things. So that's entirely up to your company how you formulate this. But you've already given them a discount by waiving the service uh, fee at the beginning. So they're already happy and to offer them another discount by uh, giving them a, a maintenance agreement or service club uh, is just gonna be the icing on the cake. So I'm really excited about being able to present this to you today. If you have any other questions, text NCI to the number and I'm gonna hand it over to Tom Whitman. Thank you, John, appreciate it. And uh, man, what a privilege it is to be with a talented group of people here. We've got uh, Matt, who's uh, the master of the brand and uh, the sales lab, it's awesome, check it out. We have CI Web Group that can definitely uh, maximize your exposure in different areas. She has uh, uh, tremendously helped a lot of my clients and I'm grateful for that, Jennifer. Uh, excellent job. Power selling, what can I say, man? You guys are rock, you guys are the best and uh, kudos and endorsements. I don't know what else I could say about that. NCI, John, John, you are the most intelligent IAQ man I've ever met in my entire life. And uh, I really appreciate your insight and in helping me with what I do as well. And then that comes to me. We're going to talk about strategy. Okay. Uh, super important for strategy. How do you optimize seasonal opportunities with your business to make sure you're going to make money and you're not going out of money? I'm going to set my timer here real quick to make sure I'm on time. There's a couple of things. If you're one person in a truck trying to grow your business, my question is, how are you going to replace yourself? That needs to be the focus. So how do you, what's your pricing strategy? What's your, get a hold of Matt, get some sort of, you know, branding strategy right now, thinking about it. How do you replace yourself in there? If you have three trucks on the road, how do you add trucks? How do you keep growing? If you're not growing, you're dying. That's the bottom line. That's what this business model is all about, this engine, okay? So let's talk about demand service. Key performance indicators, demand service. Service is the backbone of any company. I challenge, I will challenge anybody on that statement. They are in front of more people and, and want more homeowners in any given day than anybody else. They can, they can grow your business or they can kill your business with one great or one horrible experience. That's what it's all about. That's your product today. It's the experience that customer has interaction with every one and every touch with your company. And that is branding, is it not, Matt? Okay, that's what it's about. This is still a people business. So I'm going to run through a few things that are simple for you to um, uh, track, right? There's really five uh, key performance indicators, okay? Um, one is, if you would advance the, uh, the slide real quick, Ben. The first two have to do with efficiency. Uh, how efficient am I? Uh, are my dispatchers riding efficiently? Are my technicians you know, getting through the job efficiently? Are they charging for all of the work? If you're, you're waiting for uh, the month end or the quarter end for a financial statement, it's too late. You have to be in the moment. Everybody say in the moment every day. Here's a very, very simple formula for you. Uh, revenue divided by time ticket hours. If I work 10 hours for you, if I worked 10 hours and I generated uh, $1,200 that day, that means for every hour you paid me, I returned $120. And based on that, as long as my volume was where it needed to be, which is generally somewhere between 900 and 1,600, depending upon where you are, 
it was a profitable day. Okay? If you don't know what it is, do the math. And you have a good understanding of where your service department is at this point in time. And also, how many dollars a day? And month to date, how many dollars a day? Two things, right? Okay, let's go to the next one real quick, Ben. Replacement lead opportunities. Could imagine a place where you could count on 10% of all of your service and maintenance calls would turn into a sales opportunity. Imagine that, one technician running 100 calls in the slowest time of the year and that, that produced 10 leads. Service leads is you're gonna close seven or eight of them. What would that do for your company? What would that do for you? If you're one guy in a truck right now trying to replicate yourself, how quick could you start replicating yourself at this point? If you're a larger business, you're not sure where the leads are coming from, Jennifer will do a great job with bringing in opportunities in, Brigham will help you flip that into an opportunity for your technicians. And once they get in the home, can they perform at this level? I'm telling you, they can. You've got the resources for that. 10% of opportunities, replacement leads. Next slide, please. Agreement wins. Now I say agreement wins because it's a team effort. Service agreements when customers eye is a direct reflection of the experience they had with your company, the experience they had with your organization. And the best time to create that experience is when they need you most. When do they need you most? When the weather shows up. That's when they need you most. So the strategy is really pretty simple. Anything non-essential other than responding to your customers in the time of need, the non-essentials goes into the shoulder months. What's a non-essential? A maintenance green of tuna. That's non-essential at that point because we should be doing that when we need the work and we can take the time to finish the job. So we open up for business, open up for business. When the phones are off the hook, when the, when the uh, website is lighting up with people that are dialing for somebody that can get out and serve them. If you do that, if you do that consistently and you create a great experience with those customers, you will exceed 40% of those calls. 40% of those calls or more, 40% minimum, will be a, a service agreement customer for you. What's that mean? You have three months of demand service. You have 200 calls per month. That's 600 calls for a smaller company, right? 600, let me see, 600, that's 240 maintenance agreements. You've kept one technician in front of enough customers to, 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 to to, to level out the slow times. Congratulations. That's how you grow a business. That's the most predictable, the most conservative way to grow. We can help you with that. We can show you how to do that. But ladies and gentlemen, it takes tracking. We have to know what's going on in the field. We have to track performance. We see a gap in the performance. It gives us an opportunity to go out and coach them up. It's not about beating people up. It's about making sure that we're listening to our internal employees and clearly understanding what's happening out there so we can help them get better by being a better, a, a, a better business, by solving things that are in their way of making things happen and, and helping them get better at their craft, okay? 40%, let's go to the next slide, Ben. IQ solutions, preemptive work. Low demand season opportunities with homeowners during the slower season should be 30% or more in terms of indoor air quality solutions and preemptive repair. So here's another expectation. I was a technician myself. I've owned a business myself. I've managed a couple of large companies years ago. And when my younger days, what really um, disturbed me as a technician is it didn't matter what season it was. It was demand season when we were stacked with 12 or 13 calls, which we were, or if it was slow season, when I was laid off, wonder where the paycheck was gonna come from. Uh, there was a year like that once. They always expected me to focus on all five of those things. My revenue, my time ticket hour, I agree, that needs to be there all the time, but also replacement leads, agreement wins, and IQ solutions. Listen, there's a time for for uh, acquiring customers and there's a time for going back and finishing the work. Next slide, please. 
All right, demand season is all about customer acquisition opportunities. Customer acquisition opportunities. We have to, excuse me, I highly encourage you to manage the schedule and your structure so that number one, you take care of your own customers first and your maintenance agreement customers first and foremost, and health or, 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 or dangerous situations first, and then start to prioritize those calls that are not customer, there are new customers, you're invite, new homeowners, you're inviting to be future clients by age of equipment. Imagine, now hold, stay with me. You've taken care of your customers and you've kept your promise. These new customers come in, you adopt Power Selling Pro strategy, okay, and have them the uh, urgency list. Is that right, Stephen? Urgency list. Okay, right. So, but yes. when you bring those calls in, you start scheduling in order of age, oldest to youngest. And guess what happens? 40 to 50% of those are going to turn into a maintenance agreement. So you send your technicians back during the slower season with a high level of older equipment that may be ripe for a system upgrade. So imagine in the slower seasons of the month, you're in front of 100 customers, you get 10 lead turnovers, seven of them sell times however many technicians you have. I'm guessing if I asked you to show of hands, do the math. That can push your break even line, way past break even line, and that can immediately change the landscape of any organization. We can help you with that. Go to the next slide, then, please. Okay, no demand season. That's when we fulfill our promise to the customers that we acquired under the agreement and look for opportunities. Next slide, please. All right, so how to build a profit or service maintenance team. Free Zoom workshop, Wednesday, May 20th, 9 o'clock Eastern. HVACcoachingCorner.com, HVACcoachingCorner.com. Select workshops and classes for more information, how to register. Second, we're having our third, count them, three times, virtual selling workshop. We've got about 25 companies that are, uh, that are selling virtually online right now and having a blast. The track record right now is most of them are closing somewhere between 52 and 65%. Get in on this. The next class is June 2nd. Again, www.hvaccoachingcorner.com, workshops and classes. You can register there. God bless. Take care and good selling. I'm going to hand it off to, uh, to my man or financing man. Hey, thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. Good stuff. Um, great to be on this program every single week. I learn a ton of information, especially as a finance guy. I'm not necessarily a, uh, an HVAC guy, but I learn a ton of information. And how cool is it? How cool is it to have live, live, live role play involved there with Erica and, uh, and the Power Selling Pros team? Absolutely great stuff, guys. Really appreciate this. Um, as far as demand service with, with finance, this isn't really one of our big things to get into. So my performance, I shouldn't say performance. <laughs> I would love to have be a live performance here. My thing is going to be a little bit quicker than most people. What I really want to tie into is how is finance tied into demand uh, service, right? How do we turn in? So if we look at the slide, if you're looking at a service provider and one of the most common service providers we have out there that is partnered with the Goodman Amanda Network is Service Titan, right? So Service Titan's got the end-to-end -end solution that offers dispatching, offers all these other, these other processes. They also take your credit card payments. You've got to be able to take payments. That's what EGIA is about. People need to understand financing is a part of taking a payment. Actually, financing is a form of payment, right? And you shouldn't forget that financing could be a part of it with all times because EGIA hasn't. So EGIA has integrated our financing platform within the Service Titan platform. So if you're using Service Titan, go on and sign up for the Green Sky through the EGIA process. What you're going to get is you're going to get the EGIA Green Sky rate sheet, which is preferred. But let me just tell you one thing about uh, Green Sky from the financing perspective. When you look at their rate sheets and when you look at everything that they've got, their smallest uh, amount they can finance is $2,500. So you're immediately thinking that doesn't necessarily work for finance. 
that's the smallest approval that they're going to give you. Once you get that $2,500, you can actually utilize that through their process and through the service Titan process for as small as $25 if you want on a, on a repair or any kind of service issue that you need to. So the financing, again, is going to give you the opportunity to offer an easy payment solution, maybe a six-month no-no, maybe a really short no-no for a customer who's doing a repair or doing some of those other things. But it's also going to allow you to have that ability to upsell to repair a replacement unit. Ben, switch to the next slide if you don't mind. And we're looking at Pazerware. Pazerware is a very similar program. Some of you may, may select to work with Pazerware, right? They do the same thing. They're creating proposals, invoices. They're going to manage your maintenance agreements, manage your customer history, right? They, offer, they also offer the EGIA finance. They have Green Sky and Enterbank as part of their program, right? So now you're going to be using Pazer and the Pazerware to collect your credit cards, manage your recurring payments, get them into your QuickBooks. You're going to do all that. You're going to be able to use the good, better, best, but you also have the finance integrated. With these, with these software platforms like Service Titan or like Pazerware, by EGIA continuing to access and integrate with these models, we're going to have your financing correct right in there so that you don't have to leave that, that platform to be able to do your financing. You can select Green Sky, you can select Enterbank on these platforms and continue to do your financing straight through. If you go one more to Field Edge or Cool Front, we do the same thing. For those of you who are doing Cool Front Mobile, they've got, a, re as they say here, a refreshingly simple zero cost mobile app that flat rate, uh, flat rate pricing for your service repairs. The same thing, EGIA and Field Edge and Cool Front are working together. We've integrated Green Sky into their program. Again, Green Sky is a really nice platform to be able to get simple, um, simple, small approvals and you can fund it all the way down to $25 if you want to. So you can take the smallest possible and still be able to offer people finance. Real important, these are the, these are the partners that we have out here through the Goodman Network. EGAA is working with all the partners to integrate the financing so that anytime you think of payment, not only are these companies offering you valuable processing opportunities and costs for their credit cards, but we've integrated our EGIA finance solutions into them so that you can work with them as one. So with that, the only other thing I really wanna talk about real quick is we're going into mid-May. We have been running this incredible stimulus package out there for rebates on Goodman, Amana, Liberty programs, right? What we're seeing is so far, we haven't had very many people actually turn around and file for that rebates. I know cash flow is really important, especially at this particular time. So please make sure you go to egia.org forward slash Goodman or egia.org forward slash Amana, or if you're a Liberty dealer, egia.org forward slash Liberty. Please go to the website Go down, scroll down partway down to where you say Goodman Financing Promotions and click on the rebate claim portal. Make sure you, 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 you create, a, it's a simple username and password. It literally is a simple username and password. Attach the document necessary and take the money that is sitting there. When you combine the 3% Goodman or the 3% Amana or the 3% Liberty along with the buy down that would be equivalent from Green Sky, Mosaic, or Enterbank, you're talking about 5% on any job that you do that is 16 seer, single stage, or better. I will need you guys to think about this. That's 5% on every job. If you do an $8,000 job, you've got $400 available to you simply by claiming your portal, good click, claiming your rebate. Um, <laughs> so hopefully we can get, we can get you guys taking all this, uh, taking these rebates. Um, so I want to make sure you guys take advantage of rebate. Please don't lose the money that you're out there and utilize that financing so that you can offset these costs. That's what they're there for. They're meant to offset your costs so that you can offer financing every single time and they'll get uh, the money back. So with that, I'm done. I'll just move on because I know you don't need to hear me a whole lot. Ben Middleton, I'm throwing the ball over to you. 
Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, what a, a great program. And, and I, you know, I think all of the presenters really have been spot on. And the, just to wrap it up with our customer lifetime value strategy that we, we have here. So, so far, we've reviewed the different types of customers that we have from the freeloader, the prisoner, the vacationer, the explorer. And we've looked at what their lifetime value may be over the different types of customers. We've looked at the lifetime value model that we have our marketing programs. Last week, we talked about customer acquisition and uh, the five different ways that you can look at acquiring new business. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on customer retention. And I wanted to look at the reasons customers defect, if you will. And so when we look at retention rate, if you had a 70% retention rate, which would be a, a pretty good retention rate of customers, that means 30% of the customers are leaving. And uh, in the chart that I have, you'll see they leave for one of three different reasons. One is they're dissatisfied with the services that you have. So if we lost 10% of our customers because they were dissatisfied, uh, the other is uh, they leave because uh, of a deliberative move to go to a, a another profession or another pr promotion that they had. Um, and so those ones are the ones that are gonna leave there. And then last is the lifestyle. Where we need to focus on is really that dissatisfaction. And when you look at all of the things that have been covered today, that's the underlying theme of what we've been talking about. What are the things that make a customer dissatisfied or worse yet indifferent to the services that we offer to them? And one of the easier ways that you can identify this is what they call the net promoter score. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a question on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to recommend a company? What I would encourage everybody to do over the course of the next week, at the end of every single call, take the opportunity to reach out to that customer and just say, hey, I just wanted to ask one question. On a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to recommend our company? If they come back with a zero through six, that customer is a detractor. They're detracting from your business. Chances are they may not say uh, good things about your company, and so that's a really important number. If there's seven to eight, that customer is passive. Chances are they're really not gonna say anything, so we're gonna kind of take those out of the equation, and we're, we're not gonna pay attention to them in terms of identifying our net promoter score. And then if they are nine to 10, they're a promoter chances are that person will go out and tell other people about the service or the business. And our goal is to get more and more promoters. When I figure out what my percentage of customers are detractors, what percentage of my customers are promoters, that will give me my overall net promoter score. And that's where we want to continue to work as a business. How can we increase that experience and deliver a better experience to the customer in order to help us retain more customers and get a higher retention rate. Thank you so much, everybody, for this. We continue to embrace technology that's out there that's going to increase productivity. And last but not least, please thank and encourage your people for helping you have a successful, successful business. We'll talk to you all soon next week.